Good morning, YouTube. So today I'm going to be getting into, well, jumping feet first into 4-axis milling in Fusion 360. Uh, this is only about my 10th program in Fusion and only my third on the milling side. The rest have been lathe programs. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I've already been doing some programming on it and I'm pretty close, I think. So I'll show you that in a minute. But first I wanted to update you guys on my Alpha, Alpha Lock Feral program for the lathe. I was able to make that run really efficiently, so I wanted to show you what I did. Good morning, YouTube. So today I'm going to be getting into, well, jumping feet first into 4-axis milling in Fusion 360. Uh, this is only about my 10th program in Fusion and only my third with, on the milling side. The rest have been lathe programs. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. I've already been doing some programming on it and I'm pretty close, I think. So I'll show you that in a minute. But first I wanted to update you guys on my Alpha, Alpha Lock Feral program for the lathe. I was able to make that run really efficiently, so I wanted to show you what I did there. All right, guys, so looking in the lathe here, um, if you remember from the last couple videos, I had to have a uh, MO in here to stop the, the machine so I could spray out chips before the sub spindle hand, hands off to the main spindle. Um, I was also having some issues with the first handoff with there being chips in the front part and putting some dents in the chuck and in the uh, parts on the, the first handoff with chips. So um, what I did, was first of all, here's this air blow thing. If you remember, when this sticks out straight, it actually interferes with some of the, the tool holders of the opposing tools that of the one you're using. So like if I was using this tool, tool this one might hit that air blow, th this hard line here. So what I did was I just got some fittings and a piece of straight tubing, and I made it come down closer to where this one is. So it's way out of the way of the tools. It's still out of the way of the touch off probe. Um, and it's basically ready to rock. The other thing I did was I got a bunch of these line lock fittings. So uh, I can use the coolant to wash out the insides of the parts as it's running. So um, if we go here to manual jog and jog to these other tools. So right here, this is the drill and the reamer uh, for the side holes that are in the front part. And uh, so this one, this reamer, it already has a little coolant nozzle here. It gets plenty of coolant on the reamer. So what I did is I used this coolant line uh, and it basically sprays the inside of the part out while this re reamer is running, which is the last tool on that front side operation. So um, so my hope is that this really cleans out that, that inside of that part reliably before the handoff. And so far so good. So let me see if I can get some video of this thing running for you guys. All right, guys, so this is obviously sped up, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys basically how this program runs through. So that just did the turning operation. Now we're doing the boring. Um, then we'll do the groove here. Um, so if you watch these next couple tools, the, the live drill and the live reamer, uh, on that second live reamer, you'll see that it really washes that, that spindle out good before the handoff, which is uh, you know ideal and necessary if you don't wanna ding up your parts or your, your chuck face surfaces. So there's the drill. And then, uh, so three holes there, and then the reamer. So you can see I've got that jet pointed to the inside of that part. So it basically just washes it out really, really good um, right before the handoff. So, you know, paying attention to this kind of stuff really pays dividends when you're, when you're doing high production. Uh, we usually do three to 500 of these at a time. So by making this more automated with less uh, you know, user interaction. Um, it really saves us time. Uh, so there's the, the rear uh, turn and bore. Now it reverses the spindle to do the, the parting or the grooving tools because uh, the grooving tool is used on both the front and rear side. So the tool isn't flipped over like most of the rear tools. Um, but there it's done the uh, first handoff. It's machined the second side. It's about to do the next handoff. So now it's going to hand back to the front spindle and then part down the middle and then finish both sides. So apologize for all the coolant on the lens here, but you can kind of see what's going on. So now the parts have been cut in half and it's just going to finish both, both uh, ends of each part. So turning and boring on each part. So there's the turn on the front, bore on the front, It'll do the same thing to the rear. So pretty efficient at this point. 
uh, zero operator interaction besides loading the part and uh, taking the parts out. So, all right, guys, let's get into this four axis milling. All right, so here's the part we're making. It's a pretty nice 3D part. Uh, it's uh, got an AN fitting machined into it on one side and then a flange on the other. It's a, it's a coolant outlet. All right, guys, so this is the mill I'm using, my uh, VF2 SSYT uh, with the fourth axis on it. So um, this vise is going to have to come out, and we're going to put a fixture that I have on the fourth axis in order to hold that part. So we're going to do uh, kind of our order operations here is going to be uh, first operation of our part solid block will be here in the first vise. And then we'll transfer that part onto the fourth axis and to do the, the remaining operations all in one op. Uh, so it'll be a two op part to complete that whole thing. All right, so I've done these parts before. Uh, this is my little fixture. Uh, this is from, from Sleeper Designs, awesome guys over there. Uh, they make these fixtures that utilize these little orange, uh, four inch vices. Uh, so um, pretty awesome vices, pretty awesome little fixture, holds two vices. I'll only be using one on this one, but I just leave it bolted up anyway. Um, mainly because I don't think I can swing this part. I think it would have clearance issues with the base here. It hit the table. So, um, so we're only gonna be doing one at a time. So here's the jaws. So basically once we do the first operation in the, in the vices, the table vices, we're gonna use these to clamp on that flange um, on, on the, uh, the half finished part, and then we'll finish the rest of it in the fourth axis. So let's go have a look at the program and I'll show you guys what's going on. All right guys, so looking at the manufacturing window here, uh, my first setup, is basically just the block the material that would be sitting in the vices clamped down here somewhere um, so we're just doing some basic toolpaths facing an adaptive clearing toolpath uh, so this is a 3d kind of adaptive roughing uh, toolpath doing a finished contour on the inside finished contour on the outside a geodesic uh, to finish the inside radius here um, one little trick is i used a, uh, uh, a surface that i put on uh, let me see if i can show it here so there's the surface that I used to help me machine that smoothly so that's it, avoiding that hole. Uh, the ge geodesic already avoids holes, but it doesn't hurt to have that, uh, that surface there anyway. So uh, let's turn that back off. And then, uh, so yeah, so we do the geodesic and then a couple spot drill, drill and some chamfer tools. So pretty simple first operation. Um, and then we get into our second op. So this is, this is where it gets a little interesting. Um, so you'll notice that my origin is way down here in space. Uh, I didn't bother to model like my fixtures and my vices and things yet, mainly because I haven't figured out how to nicely pull those those into different programs. Um, and uh, I don't know, it just would take a lot of time and I'm, I don't have a lot of time. So um, basically what I did here was I just made a sketch. Let's see if I can figure out which one it was here. Uh, yeah, that one. So I just made a sketch that was had a basically the center line of my fourth axis. Um, so I just did that off of the part. And then, um, so we have our X, Y, zero. Well, I guess our X zero here and our Y and Z zero will be this point here. So that's the center line of the fourth and then the center line of the part in X. So that's how we set that up. And then let me hide that. And then we just go through the part. So we're doing a, another adaptive clearing. So this is sitting flat in the vise on the fourth axis. Um, so adaptive clearing. Notice I have a lot of tool clearance here um, because when this thing rotates, if it rotates from, from you know, this angle up, um, if you don't have this tool get out of the way, you could, ha you could run into some crash situations. Um, so I, I have a lot of clearance on these. Um, so we do an adaptive clear and then we do a contour. All, all, all I'm doing is finishing part, part of this on this contour, um, but you notice how the tool changed planes from there to there. So all you do here is in your tool, you go to tool orientation and then you pick your axis and Z. So I pick the face of this internal hole here and then I just had to flip Z to make it right. Uh, but that's literally all you have to do to make it work with the fourth axis. And then uh, as long as you're calling up your four axis post, uh, it should know what to do. So contour there, contour there, finishing the outside of those threads. We're doing facing to make sure the face of that is finished. Uh, we're doing a ramp down into the, uh, into the bore here to rough that out and finish it. Uh, it's doing some steps. Um, we're doing a contour with a 3 8 ball mill in order to finish this taper on the top of this AN fitting. Um, and then we're getting into some surfacing here. So we're doing a contour around here. 
I'm not quite sure what these red lines mean. It looks like possibly it's not touching, but maybe it's close. So they're trying to warn you with some color coding. But to me, it looks like all of the toolpaths look correct, especially when you verify it. Um, so just doing that, doing a scallop here. Um, actually, I'm gonna, I need to delete this contour. So I had replaced it with the scallop toolpath, which I thought would be a little more efficient, a lot less rapids moving around. Um, so got rid of the uh, contour that was going around there, replaced it with a scallop. And then, so that's all doing it from this uh, tool, tool orientation. And then we go back to the front tool orientation. We're doing a scallop there as well. Um, and then we get into some contours. So I've got like a, a slitting saw here uh, that does the, the relief behind these threads. Uh, we do a thread mill. So we're doing a thread mill profile there. And then inside chamfer to deburr it. And then outside chamfer to chamfer the lead in on these threads. And that's about it. So um, let me get this set up and we'll go through the program. All right, now that I got my fixture in here, I need to run an indicator across this to make sure that it's flat and dial in my G54 and G55 A0. So I've already done this. So now that I have that in zero, I need to set my let's offset here. So part zero set on the A axis. So that's what I need to make all of these. Oops. So pretty close. Um, I already know my Y and Z zero because I keep them in all my extra offsets so that I don't forget. So I, after I dialed in that, that fourth axis, I just keep those numbers there as a reference. So I'll make those all correct and get some parts cut and we should be good to go. Okay guys, so I got this all set up. Uh, so operation one, the stop, uh, the, the work coordinate is the center of the block and the top of the stock actually. So it's got offset built into the program so it'll clean up the top. Uh, the second one, uh, Z and Y are the center line of the fourth axis, so here. And then X is the center line between these two jaws here. So that's the way I had it before. Um, I've already ran one of these and had to change a couple things. So this uh, thread start point needed to come down a little bit because it was leaving some marks. I think you can see that there. And then for some reason, I got this little ding in here from the roughing. And it looked to be kind of an error or maybe even some chatter from the adaptive clearing cycle. Uh, it looked a little funny there on the retracts because I had it doing a minimum retract, so I just made it go to a full retract, and that looked like it cleaned up that area of the program and of the toolpaths. So a couple things, and I needed to dial in the major on this uh, this thread here, so it was cutting a little oversized, so I moved that down a little bit so we should get some nice flats on that thread. But besides that, really, really close. So all I'm gonna film this for you guys, and uh, we'll uh, see what we get. This one should come out perfect. All right, guys, so first operation in the vise here on G54 uh, is the face mill. And then uh, after that, we'll get into some 3D roughing with a half inch end mill. So it's kind of a long end mill so we can reach down to the base of that part. Uh, I'm kind of skipping through the program here just so you guys get the, the gist of how it functions. So that's 3D roughing, and that's fin doing some finished profiles on the flange of that part there. Uh, and then we get into some uh, that geodesic toolpath with a half inch ball mill. So finishing that hemisphere inside that part, that 3D surface. And then a couple drills here, so a spot drill, and then a you know standard drill. And then just some chamfers to deeper the outside edges of the part. So that will complete op one in the vise, and then we'll switch over back to the half inch end mill and finish some 3D roughing on the fourth axis here. So that's that same half inch end mill, uh, just profile roughing the back side of that part, bottom side of that part, whatever you want to call it. So this is with the flange that we finished in the first vise, uh, held in the vise on the fourth axis there. So that's 3D roughing. And then you'll see the uh, fourth axis change angle and it'll do some finishing contours on the 
uh, threaded portion of that fitting on that part. So here in just a second. So it changes angles there and then does some profile finishing and then it'll finish the bore that, that goes down through the middle of that fitting. That's that helical ramp that we did. And then we'll switch back over to a 3 8 ball mill and we'll start doing some finishing operations. So that is surfacing the, uh, the tapered portion of that fitting, the, ce the ceiling surface. And then it'll go through and start profiling the uh, surface fit on, on the complete outer portion of the part there. So it, it does part of it from this angle and then it'll do part of it from uh, A0, which so the vise rotated back up flat to the table. So right there you saw it move again. So that's finishing basically the whole outside profile of that part, all those 3D surfaces. And then uh, it'll get into doing some profiles around that, um, that fitting. So we're doing an undercut here with a wheel cutter. And then we'll get into a chamfer mill. So we'll chamfer the ID of the, the fitting there and then the lead in on the threads. And then after that, we'll do the thread mill, which will be the final tool on the second operation on the fourth axis. So that finishes the part. So there you go guys, four axis milling in Fusion 360 is actually pretty damn easy. Uh, these parts are turning out really nice. So that's awesome. Uh, huge shout out to Sleeper Designs for these cool fixtures they make. Uh, extremely huge shout out to uh, Garrett Wade who has held my hand through my, my uh, Fusion learning curve here. Um, and uh, check him out on Instagram. Uh, I'll, I'll post his handle down below. Um, He's, he's an awesome guy, super super cool dude, super uh, good at sharing knowledge and all that kind of stuff, really really giving dude. So uh, go follow him, and, uh, and that's about it. So I guess we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.